Ooh, dude, you guys killed it. All right, so uh, I did the episode one of the audio file setup tours. This is gonna be episode two, specifically the Patreon edition. I think I'm gonna have two Patreon editions. And then we'll go to the YouTube submissions and uh, you guys rock. You have a lot of kick-ass setups. I plan on showing them all off. And if you wanna learn how to submit your setup to get featured on this channel, just like you see in this video, please see the top link in the description down below. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this with audio file setup tours episode to Patreon edition. Dude, some of these setups put mine to shame. It's it's awesome. You guys have such kick-ass setups. Uh, the first person I wanna thank for sending their setup out is going to be Alexander B. Thank you very much, Alexander. I appreciate it. Okay, so this guy's got a pretty sweet setup. So his DAC is an RME ADI-2 DAC. Uh, for his headphone amplifiers, he actually has a bottle head crack uh, with, uh, according to him, upgraded capacitors. I'm not sure which capacitors though, but he says upgraded capacitors a Suzy Dynalo MK2, and he has a Dynalo MK1. Uh, for the speaker amplifier, he actually has a Yamaha M4, and this thing looks uh, pretty sweet. Um, I've always been curious about the Dynalos. I've never heard of Dynalo, and everybody just raves about them. I, I'd be curious to hear it. Uh, it'd be pretty awesome. Let me know if you do want to send it in. <coughs> cough, cough. And then these speakers are Statement 2s, and he says that they were built by him and his dad. Um, and I think that, like, Having this desk with those giant speakers, just, it's so overkill, but I love it. I think it's so cool. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a, I'm a total nerd for this sort of stuff. I think it's fascinating. So regarding the headphones he has, he actually has Bear Dynamic T1 Gen 1s uh, with 3.5 millimeter jacks that he modded himself, a pair of LCXs uh, with a carbon headband, and I uh, love that headphone, really. And then HC600. So I'm gonna make a prediction here. I think we're gonna see a lot of these HC600s in this series. They're just a super popular um, headphone. And even though they're like over 20 years old now, they still hold up till today's standards for sound. It's actually kind of mind blowing how good they sound for the age. It's crazy. Now for the sources, and I'm not familiar with this one, he has a Revox uh, PR99 MK3 line. Uh, from BBC, a Volumeo streamer with a Raspberry Pi and a Hyphenberry DAC Plus Pro. And he let me know in the email where those were because I'm an idiot and I don't know anything about the sources. <laughs> Anyways, so thank you. Uh, cables, just RCA XLR, are, are made by him, which is really cool. Uh, and the cables for the HD600 and the T1s were made by Sebastian Kedra. So those look like some nice cables. So uh, good job, Sebastian. All right, Alex, thank you very much for submitting your setup. This, this thing is awesome. It's pretty incredible. This one uh, puts mine to shame. So good on you, mate. <sighs> that first cup of coffee is so good. All right, so funny story about coffee, actually. There was this motivational speaker talking all about like Starbucks and the rise to power and uh, the management uh, that was, the Starbucks' version of Steve Jobs, basically. It left the company, the company was falling down and then the, the guy came back in and boosted the company up and stuff like that. And this motivational speaker was talking all about how this guy's brilliant genius mind led Starbucks to become just this massive company. Uh, somebody had responded to this guy with just the most perfect answer saying that I think it had more to do with putting an addictive substance on every single corner of every single street ever. I think that led more to their success than anything. Now, honestly, I think both are probably a little bit true and it's interesting to see those two different mentalities kind of clash uh, in the two different life perspectives. Uh, I found it funny at least, maybe you did. Sorry for the boring story if it was boring, but fairly enough, you didn't come here for coffee and you definitely didn't come here for comedy. All right, the next up we have Simon Grant. Thank you very much for submitting your setup as well. So this guy's a pretty minimal setup and I kind of like it. It's got one solid state amp, one tube amplifier, and one set of headphones and that's basically all you need. So he does the smart thing and he streams all of his stuff through Tidal out of his MacBook. Um, he says he does a USB to iFi Nano DSD black label, which is that little little guy over there, which in fact, I have the full size black label over there and that thing just demolishes stuff. Um, it's, it's really good. Then he's got some AudioQuest cables that are going to his little dot MK2 uh, with OE Chinese, uh, with OE Chinese tube amps uh, changed for a, and I'm gonna probably mess this one up, a 6H6P6H6N Novers Noversursk Sorry about that one. As uh, tube drivers, and, you know, I'm just gonna put the info in the description down below because it's just not working. And then uh, he has a custom cable by uh, Owe. O, o, sorry, I'll put a link down in the description below. And then, in my opinion, one of the best headphones you can buy is the HD660S. That's a that's an incredible headphone. And 
Like I said, we're gonna be seeing that 600 series a lot, I imagine. Pretty sweet setup. It looks like he's going the Z route with uh, some gray yoga blocks to keep everything up. So thank you very much, Simon, I appreciate it. All right, next up we have Daniel Caridi. Thanks very much, Daniel, for uh, submitting here. So Daniel's got a pretty interesting setup. Um, my girlfriend was actually looking at these pictures uh, with me, uh, checking out everybody's. And I have to ask, like just on a personal level, I don't know how you do the double monitor thing. Like it just seems like it just be so much like looking up. And my only guess is that it was prioritized the audio because it looks like you spent a lot of time setting up your uh, monitors there to, you know, kind of be in the correct position, correct height. So maybe that was the priority. Uh, this is another pretty sweet setup. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Now, Daniel actually planned like the whole desk out, like he drew it out and everything. Um, and that's pretty sweet. Um, so he's got a lot of stuff. Some of the stuff I'm not going to cover, like he's got an iPod and things like that. I'm going to leave that out for just now, just for time's sake. Uh, for his DAC, he has a SMSL SU8. And fun fact, apparently this is the very unit that Z Reviews reviewed. Um, shout out to Z Review. For the amp fire, he has a shit Magni 3. It's, I think, still the most powerful $100 amp that you can get right now. And even though there's a little bit better measuring stuff on the market today, it's still a super solid amp for 100 bucks. You can't really go, get, go wrong. It offers massive bang for your buck opportunity. So he's actually doing something that I, I thought about doing, but I can't commit to a setup hard enough to do it, which is strapping it underneath his desk. Um, I wanted to make a custom mount for my desk so I could either mount stuff sideways or underneath the desk. Um, maybe if I ever get to a position where I just make, you know, I, I have like an end game type of thing where I know I'm never going to upgrade uh, or anything like that. But I, I don't know why. It's just, it's seamless. It's out of the way. It works well. And, you know, it's not some obtrusive thing in your desk that you're always kind of fighting for space for. I commend you for actually committing to do that because that's something I wish I could do. For his preamp, he's using a big knob passive. And his studio monitors are EVE SC205s. And those look pretty sweet. They're standing on some isoacoustic L8R155 stands. Those are some really good looking monitors. I, I, If you guys haven't picked this up, I love industrial looking things. I don't know why. Like anything that has metal, like the whole shit lineup, just looks wise, I just think is just awesome. I love it. So for headphones, he has Odyssey iSine 10s, Bear Dynamic DT1990s. He says that's his daily driver. Great choice, by the way. Uh, also, if if you're bugged at all by that peak, I recommend AKG 220 uh, foam. Uh, you can go online and look that up, and they sell like just the the little foam discs that go in between the driver and your ear. Putting that on those 1990s actually does a whole lot to correct that peak without really messing up the rest of the sound signature. Highly recommend checking it out. It's like, it's a few bucks. It's like three, four bucks. He has Fossex T50RPs that he's saying he's eventually turning into Argons. Another great choice. I like this. Uh, Tin T2s, which I have yet to hear, even though everybody raves about them. Uh, Vmoda Crossfade 2 Codex Edition. He says it's the main wireless cans for just running around uh, everyday beaters. So those things are tough as nails. So it's a good headphone to do it with. See on a personal note, I like stuff like, I like people like this, like Dan, for example. So on his notes about the Crossfade wireless twos, he says, uh, note the position near the door uh, in the room so that I can just grab them quickly and go. Like it's something simple, but you can tell that somebody really put a lot of thought into it. And I love that. Now, some of the other comments that he made, like in the additional comment section, um, he was talking about like how he plans to move to title and streaming services. That's a really big thing that I think a lot of people are, are doing. And I think it's a serious consideration. Like you're always going to have the hardcore people who are like, no, you, like streaming introduces artifacting and all this stuff. But almost everybody's account that I feel like is actually given title a legitimate try has loved it. Um, I just wish they had a little bit more music. I use Google Music myself um, for a portion of my listening, although I have a lot of uh, actual uh, files. So and I listen to them because I have them. But if you don't have that, streaming services like Tidal are a fantastic option uh, for listening to a bunch of high quality music. Really, really a good idea. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up for Daniel. Thanks again, man, I appreciate it. And then we have Riodin's setup. Riodin has a shit Asgard too. Uh, I, I'm assuming we'll also see a lot of shit gear. I think that's gonna be one of the more popular amplifiers um, and popular headphones is gonna be those HD 600 line and the Asgard too. Uh, great choice, by the way. A uh, little bit of B4X portable tube amplifier. I'm not too familiar with that unit. I'd like to check it out at some point. He has a shit body two DAC, a pair of Sennheiser HD 6XXs. Again, there we go, see him pop up. Uh, Hyperman 4XXs and Audio-Technica ATH-AD2000 
X headphones. And then he's got uh, headphone stands that he bought from Amazon stuck on the side. AP, I'm not familiar with that company. If I can find a link, I'll put it in the description down below. Uh, thanks very much, Reardon, for sending in your setup. I appreciate it, dude. All right, then the last one for this episode is going to be Sebastian. And Sebastian has a pretty sweet setup. Looks really nice. Um, he has a lot of different areas for his setup. He has a living room setup with some Kef LS50 wireless speakers, um, as well as a BK XLS200 subwoofer. Um, he apparently has some uh, do-it-yourself audio panels too on the back, um, and it looks like all around his room. And I'm not sure if he's in an apartment or not, but it looks like a good use of that space. And uh, everybody seems to rave about those LS50s. People seem to really like them, if you're into that sort of CAF setup. Now he also has a PC setup and a portable setup. Now on the PC setup, he has a ZMF Aeolus, and Heifman Aria, great choices by the way. Uh, an RME ADI2 DAC feeding the THX789, another great choice, and Behringer MS40 speakers. Then he added a note here that he says he uses it for YouTube primarily, um, and he does all of his music listening exclusively on his headphones. And then he actually made his own cables, which is pretty neat. Now for his portable setup, he has a Feo M11, and then uh, a Cyan N62, a little bit of B4. He has a Fearless S8 Freedom. He says he just rented it from a friend, and an Audiofly 1120 Mark II. And he says, I hope those pictures would do. Yeah, dude, these ki these pictures kick ass. Thanks very much for uh, submitting your setup. You got a lot of good stuff here. Um, it's pretty sweet. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. First, thank you guys very much for being patrons. You kick ass. Now, if you guys watching this want to be patrons for early access to videos like this one, uh, that's gonna be uh, one of the links in the description down below, as well as everything else that I mentioned in this video. It's gonna be a long list. But if you wanna submit your setup to get featured on the channel exactly like this, uh, again, top link in the description to learn how and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot, peace.